thank you thank you thank you guys for watching my last video how one family that's us grew 2,000 pounds of food in just 100 days my family and I for 100 days set out to see what we could grow in that short amount of time in short we grew almost 2,000 pounds of food in milk eggs chicken meat and veggies is if you missed it I'll leave a link there and down in the description What's the matter, Mr. Brown? I want down. You want down? Okay, good. All right, go find them. I want you my little. There's no shoes. We cannot find the shoes. Okay, get back in. That was the first video in our three-part series, The Good, Bad, and Ugly of the 100 Days of Growing Food. Today, we're going to talk about the bad, the mistakes, the tragedies, the fails, the top 10. And you know, you guys love fails really fat well we don't really love fails you think she's just fat there's there's something to this I figured out why we're interested when bad things actually happen I've never seen anything like it but I don't do this a whole lot I think it's because deep down we can learn the most from what went wrong I made a mistake and since then, by the way, we figured out that that hen was fat, not just because it was getting older and of genetics, which is one part of it. The second part is we weren't rationing properly because we didn't account for all the food they were getting off the land in that deep mulch. Plus, we found out later that Lily was sneaking in the afternoon and throwing them feed. So, I'm going to share with you the top 10 things that went wrong on our homestead in order of happening and we're gonna learn from it, and you're gonna learn from it. It's our best teacher. It was right here in this very spot. We put sea monsters out. Let's get them in there. <laughs> That's one way to get them over here. Dip their beaks in the water. Or just put them out there. That's fine, they'll know. There you go. Look, Mr. Brown, look how they forage right away. They know exactly what to do. But crows started getting our birds. Yeah, it was a good run, even though it lasted only about six hours for that we tried an age-old technique can you see him can you see him over there the uh the scarecrow mom's even got him a neck here's my proposed arm we're thinking it's too short though so we're gonna make extensions to where he's going like this this is flexing a couple of garden snakes will do you've got the arm in look at my head rebecca is that your impression of me yeah. see i was thinking he'd be flexing you got him going. Like He's dancing. Like Put his pants on. There we go. And it actually worked. It kept those crows away. Hey, where's your hat, buddy? And I want to say, thanks for your hard work. I will say about him, though, he only worked for a couple of weeks. And then I noticed the crows would come in the chicken cage and eat the chicken food. So we keep the chicken food now closer to the coop. And I think what happened early on, honestly, is the crows didn't know about the feed. That was the first time. And I think they actually prefer the feed to the birds. And it seems to be seasonal. I haven't even seen crows lately, so it's not like they're getting my feed or my chickens now. And when they get my, did get our feed, it was absolutely minimal. Those chicks were also getting out of our electric poultry net fence. When we came out here, they all started busting through. Hurry up, they're getting out. Why are they not getting shocked? That's one of our problems. When they're this small, they're getting out. They were just too small and, can get, and could just crawl through. They're getting out this upper part. So for that, we actually found a product called the Shocker Knot. This is the Shocker Knot. It's got this one inch mesh at the bottom. See, even the littlest chick isn't gonna get through this. Inside that greenhouse, we had mice starting to get our seeds. Even when we put the seeds on a table way up high, in the past that's worked, this time it didn't for whatever reason. <gasps> it ate it even though it sprouted. Yes. Oh, there's something that going punk. on here. What's going on with this? What is that? Okay, Look at it, it's shredded over here. And it did it over there to my field pumpkins. I'm really upset. This is really annoying. 
I think we can beat this thing. To solve that problem, we did two things. One, we got cats. Come here, let's show us the mice heroes. Are you a mouse hero? Are you? <laughs> hey Lily, do they catch mice? Yeah. How do you know? I, I saw them. Yes, yes. From very early on, that cat did its job. That's Royal, and we have Almanzo here somewhere. This is what Rebecca built to protect from the mice, and it totally worked. It's on hinges, flat platform, plywood. It was just on an old wooden cart we had. It locks. The mice cannot get through or did not get through the half inch. We could put our blocks that they don't eat any kind of seed. They like squashes, pumpkins, cucumber, those big type of seeds with a little mm inside of it, you know. They wouldn't get in this, but we could still water them. We could open this up to get them out. It worked great. That's our fall garden. It's actually doing well. In the spring, our garden didn't do so well. These tomatoes were... It was going to die. I was almost going to write it off. But what made this do so well is what we learned from in the spring. When we transplanted into this deep mulch, we realized, one, the plants needed to be hardened off. I got the plastic pinned to the roof. Now, we're going to pin it to our 2 by 4 No, it's not a 2 by 4 2 by 2 Look at there, folks. I hope this works. Let's roll this back down. We're gonna roll it down every evening. In the morning, we gotta pick that up. Another thing we did was one beautiful one began to make compost tea and we fed that to them. How much are you putting on there? Um, just some. I don't have any. Just some. I love this. You, I don't you, have you any. plant like you cook. I was gonna say. A third thing we did from our chicken butcherings, we harvested the blood, diluted it 10 to 1 with water, and poured it directly on them. That was the number one thing that revived and saved our plants. Hey, look at our Swiss chard. Something we put on this stuff. It's the blood, has, I'm pretty sure. boosted it. Well, look. Look at how good these are looking. Look. Look at, look at these tomato plants. Look at this. Look it's how working. lush. It's working. This stuff is so much greener. Look at how lush that is. But also, every once in a while, Violet pees in the stanchion. Yes, pees in the stanchion. And if we're lucky enough, we've got a bucket on hand, and we catch it. We dilute that 10 to 1 and pour that on the garden. Now, this fall crop transplant, they're doing absolutely amazing. They're thriving now that they're outside of the greenhouse. They actually jumped in production. They actually sped up after they got out. That bok choy, man. It's right here in this stanchion. I spent a lot of time close up with our family cow. And I began to notice in the spring she wasn't losing her hair. for She wasn't shedding her coat. And also, she had had a calf. She made him stand up. You are a good mom, Violet. Absolutely beautiful baby boy. He's so cute. But she wasn't coming back into heat, meaning she wasn't cycling and coming into a stage where she could get pregnant. After a lot of research and study and talking to folks and tests from the veterinarian and blood tests. We realized she was mineral deficient. It's just so much better when you have a blood test and you can see the problem. What we did there was we took on a an intensive mineral system. You got your extras marked and oh, nice handy mark. barrels. It's called Advanced Biological Concept. It's 16 different minerals. Plus we add kelp and we leave room for one more. So we made like 18 mineral spots in one mineral shawl and we're very excited about it because you can easily pull it behind the cows and wherever the cows are whatever the need they need in that time whatever minerals are not in the land they take it up from the mineral shawl and heal their bodies we're addressing the core issue it's all in here beauty has marked it on the two by fours we're missing one but we just need a tray we're missing two trays and now stud muffin and bear and cows on this farm in the future will all benefit from our mineralization plan. Wild rugged train.
Good morning, ladies. How you doing? Free the birds. I think it was right about here. Or was it down here? All the chickens were up, so I went to look for Pooper. Pooper, for those of you who don't know, is our guard goose in training. Growing up to be a guard goose over the flock. And then I came out here and then I didn't see I didn't see him. I saw him tangled over here and he's tangled all up in this. There's some of his feathers. He's busted the tent. He was a big pain in the butt to untangle. Was he dead when you found him or is he still alive? He was dead. That's where a guard goose got scared, we think, because of a broody hen and ran into the electric fence and got tangled. Now, we did two things to fix that problem. One, notice this fence. Notice how tight it is. Diagonal rebarb, pulling that tight. Support posts, every other one. Ain't nothing gonna get tangled in this anymore. It's so tight. The other thing was, it was, we think, it was a vicious, broody hen running that goose out of the coop and running it away and frighten that goose into the fence. We don't know for sure, but we think that was a possibility. But what we did was implement the broody break. This right here is a bulletproof way to break your broody hen. Get a cage. This is just a big dog crate that we had. Uh, you don't have to do it this big. You could do it twice as small. Food and water in there. And we put down a piece of cardboard so that we can, so for when they manure, we can easily pick it up. It doesn't get on our crate. The key is no eggs, no bedding, and eventually it'll break. I've seen some take as many as three days. I've never seen it go over three days. Looks like the yellow one. Oh, look, she's puffing up a little bit there. That's how you test. You come in and you grab them and you see if they puff up, puff up and growl at you. No! Versus run. So they attack you if they're broody, they puff up an attack, and they run if they're not. Royal here, he's one of the other terrible things that happens. You remember what happened to him that was so bad? All of a sudden we heard a and then and we looked over and Royal was, this thing fell on him. And when I pulled it off, he acted all crazy, walking all crooked, freaked us out. No, no, no. It's rolling. Oh no, what's wrong with him? Well, we got him in, we did some research, we figured he probably just had a concussion. We let him rest. You taking a nap? He's been sleeping. His eye, his pupils look like they're back to a normal. But we let him rest for what, three hours? And he was feeling better. Send him down, see if he does. This is after three hours rest. Oh, yay. Oh, he's catching. Oh. He's getting better, he's gonna make it. The worry and the anxiety, it's amazing how you get attached to such a fuzzball. <laughs> huh, Lily? We don't want anything to happen to him. I'm so upset. I'm not sure what we learned about the cat accident, except maybe they do have nine lives. It happened about, well, right here. Tomatoes, all of a sudden, we're just gone. Another one right here, look. We just had stems left. We went to our member area and we said, what in the world, what's going on? And, and they named it right away, the tomato hornworm. It looks so gross. That thing so, is like absolutely disgusting. We've never had tomato hornworm. Don't hit the horn. Yeah, but can you like peel it back and get me if I... I have no idea. They said that they don't bite, or they said that they do bite. I'm not worried about biting, I'm worried about that horn. There's an easy solution. Ooh. Now the chickens will eat it. Yes, they said feed it to the chickens. He's problem really into a solution. There. I purchased a black light flashlight. I saw in our member area somebody put another YouTuber, Roots and Refuge, linked their vlog to our to to that um, thread, and she had this black light flashlight that she came out and she was like shining it on there and picking all sorts of them off of them. Oh look, he's trying to get me with that horn. <laughs> <laughs> this next bad thing that happened is certainly my least favorite. It's probably the most tragic. It began to happen. We began to notice it right there. It happened right under, there. Under that tree. One half, it, That's where one died? When it first started happening. Oh yeah, you're right. There was one died there too, but... Uh, one died right there, you're right. That was where it first happened. And 
our sheep started dying. He's just scared. I mean, you gotta realize too that three of his herdmates have died in the last three days. So. And it was out of nowhere. And at first we didn't know what was happening. And the lab where you can get manure tested or even dead animals tested, it was the weekend and they were closed. And at the time we didn't know, you can actually drop off on the weekend, call and leave them a message and they come in on an emergency basis. We didn't know that. So we waited till Monday, got it tested, found out they had heavy parasite loads. We began to treat them intensively. It began an epic battle to save these guys. Ultimately, we ended up losing four, but not all bad came of that. But we also spent a lot of time with them in the last two weeks that bonded us to them. So it was definitely hard to see, you know, to see it, but it's the reality of farming. High sight is 2020. So when we go do the sheep again, we're gonna know so much about dealing with parasites. One, you don't wanna mow them on grass that's four inches or lower. Getting a flock that is naturally parasite resistant, getting a breed that thrives in a moist area like North Carolina. A lot of sheep breeds thrive in arid climates, but not all of them. There are some that have grown and adapted to very moist climates. We learned to do the FAMACHA test where you lift up the eyelids and look for red. We learned how to give vitamin B shots. We learned how to drench through the mouth for intensive deworming. We learn what we do next time to do maintenance to even prevent it from happening in the first place. Not all was lost. We were able to harvest one. I, guys, I, this is big. This is big. Just, you gotta know how big this is. I've never killed or dressed such an animal. Dress meaning like skin it, get it ready for butchering. I've never done that. We decided we were gonna do that one day and the next day I was doing that. And just from stuff, I scrounged up from around the farm. Okay, it's an hour and in. It's six o'clock. I feel like I feel like we're almost done with this one. I feel, I feel like I'm doing pretty good for no instructions. Hey Jonah, what would you do different about sheep? Get a hardier breed and tame ones. Ah, okay, yeah. If they were tame, they would have been a little bit easier to yes. treat, huh? Yes. Also, a couple of you have reached out and says, thank you, thank you, thank you. You may have very well saved my sheep because you learned from what was going on with us and you caught it early. You started deworming, you started doing an eye test, you started taking the steps that we would have taken had we known. In some odd, weird way, it helps. It makes it feel like it was worth it. It makes it feel like it wasn't all lost. Even though we lost all our sheep, countless others will save their sheep. I gotta do this bit in front of these flowers. Aren't these beautiful, Jonah? Sure. Who do you, who do you guys think planted these flowers? Mama. Ding, 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 ding. The beautiful one. But it wasn't all peaches and cream with her this year. One night she woke up with a cramp, an intense cramp that was getting worse and worse. And eventually she had to go to the hospital. You know, I kissed her goodbye thinking, okay, she'll be back in a little bit. She's just got some weird cramp, some maybe, maybe pulled a rib muscle or something like that. She'll be back. Gave her a kiss, said, said goodbye. Well, she called me early in the morning, up and decided she's gonna have to have surgery. Switched. She's got the kids. John will have the chores. And I'll have the mama. So I go there, I greet her. Hey. <laughs> Afternoon, they were able to have surgery and get out the appendix. Yeah, Look who's back. How'd you do? I have no idea. 
<laughs> what happened when you woke up? There was cows with me. What were they doing? Eating grass. Hmm? Well, that's good. Yeah. Tomorrow's gonna be a new day. Are you hurting right now? No, it doesn't hurt now, but they gave me lots of drugs. Lots of drugs and ice chips. Do you want to rest or do you want to keep talking? I want ice chips. She's supposed to be bringing them. She will. I went back to the kids and on my way home I started to realize, realize something and I had a bit of a regret. On the way to see Rebecca I passed this, I, I noticed this graveyard and I thought you know that graveyard looks a little overgrown those people are probably forgotten and that's it. And now I'm thinking, well, I'm glad Rebecca's not going into the, the similar situation in a few days. I know what I'm saying? And at the hospital, I'm reading this book called The Kite Runner. And he mentioned something about a graveyard with no names on the stones. People long forgotten. Maybe they didn't even go through the trouble to name the stones in the first place. short and we're gonna be forgotten we're gonna be gone and forgotten and these hugs these opportunities for hugs it's priceless we can go out and make efforts and make money and get things and grow things and do a lot of great things for an effort we pay for it with an effort and we reap the rewards and that's a wonderful thing but a hug and a kiss, that's something we take for granted. It's like the air we breathe, it's like the water we drink, the trees we pass by, the hugs and the kisses we take for granted because it's free, but it's priceless. And if it was gone, and I've had no more opportunity, I would be willing to pay all I've got, plus debt, trillions of dollars if I had them, to get one last kiss. It would be slow, it would be thoughtful, it would be of the mindset of I'm taking notes, and it would be captured. It would be documented. Lesson there is kiss hug your loved ones and cherish it, remember it, and even document it if you can. <laughs> you can line it up. I know, you gotta be gentle. You gotta be oh. Gentle. I love you. Cause this is where all my stuff is. We'll sh I'll show it to you later, it's all right. She wanted to see y'all before we left. I know, I did. Hey buddy, I missed you. I missed you. Why don't you give her a kiss? I mean it. I love you. Papa, I didn't know you Give mom a kiss and then we'll go. You'd be good at the dentist. I love you guys. I will. No, I, 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 I will oh. my bike. Huh? What? I got my bike. I I love you too. It's good to be on. Good. I'm you want to hug her too? Have you hugged her too? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Oh. All right, I gotta get inside. Those are my top 10 fails this year during the 100 days of growing food. Hopefully you guys learned just as much as we did from it. Now, many, 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 many people, really if you look deep down, aren't growing food or aren't growing certain things because they're afraid. And I give it to you, it is scary. These things are alive. Whether it's living plants or living chickens, they're alive and they can die. And sometimes 
it could have been prevented. So that responsibility and weight and pressure falls on you. And I won't say that can go away. And I don't say that should go away. I think fear is healthy in this case. I think we need to not shun it completely, but take it on. Certainly, don't put fear in the driver's seat and let it control your life, but take fear and say, hey, why don't you be a backseat driver? Yeah, backseat drivers are annoying, but, <laughs> but sometimes they need to be listened to, and sometimes they're right, and sometimes they stop us from a tragic accident, but they don't stop us completely. We are in the car riding together. To change our relationship with fear and say, what are you trying to tell me? Take it in. We feared that our sheep were going to die. So what did we do? We did all we could to save them. We learned the Famacha test. We learned how to deworm. We learned how to do the fecal test. We fought for it because we feared the worst. Listen to that fear. Embrace it. Do the best. Don't let it stop you. You be the driver. Let that fear be the passenger. Embrace it and just go and do like we did from this 100 days and learn from your mistakes and you grow and you get better so much faster and the next time ends up being so much better. Hey, hey buddy. Hey, how's it going? You gonna, you gonna sit with me now right here? Aw, thanks. You don't want a meaningful hug and kiss? <laughs> they don't always want a meaningful hug and kiss. Doesn't always work out textbook. Hopefully that's what this video has taught you. You can read the textbooks and it's all behind and dandy in those textbooks. But here on this show, we're showing you the reality. We're showing you what everybody goes through and that's failure. But we can learn from our failures too and grow and get better. Perhaps learn from them more than we can anything else. Thanks for watching this video. Do tune in to our next video in this series. We're gonna talk about the ugly. It's gonna be a little more lighthearted and fun. We're gonna talk about the absolute ugliest, nastiest, things that happen during the 100 days of growing food and of course what we're doing to improve all that. Now I got a little gift for you guys. If you share the love, share the love, share this video from the link down in the description and I'll give you a video I created just for my members on how to keep an electric fence hot. Remember how we talked about keeping an electric fence tight? We're going to talk about ways to make sure you keep it hot like actually electrified. It's useful without the electricity, but it's much, much, much more useful with the electricity. So check that out. Thanks for sharing.